The U.S. Supreme Court has now overturned the historic Roe v. Wade ruling. Abortion could now become illegal in at least 22 U.S. states. Ending nearly 50 years of a precedent, this means that more than 36 million women could lose the access to abortion. Until now, abortion in America was guided by the landmark Supreme Court case. Roe v. Wade, the 1973 case, decided that access to abortion is a constitutional right. The 1992 ruling Planned Parenthood v. Casey further upheld it, which says that women can get an abortion until the fetus is viable. That's usually around 22 to 24 weeks. The ruling was overturned by a conservative majority ruling. Those who were in favor in overturning were Justices Samuel Alito, Clarence Thomas, Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh, and Amy Conant Barrett. The latter three Justices are Trump appointees. Thomas first voted to overrule Roe 30 years ago. The Chief Justice John Roberts did not join the opinion, however. He agreed with the majority that the Mississippi Abortion Restriction Act issue in the case should be upheld. But in a separate opinion, he argued that the court should not have overturned Roe. Justices Stephen Breyer, Sonia Sotomayor and Elena Kagan, the liberal wing of the court, dissented. And this is what the majority judgment said, and I quote, Abortion presents a profound moral issue on which Americans hold sharply conflicting views. The Constitution does not prohibit the citizens of each state from regulating or prohibiting abortion. Overturning the Roe v. Wade judgment means that the U.S. will now join countries that restrict abortion rights. Since 1994, only three countries have done this. This includes Poland, El Salvador and Nicaragua. So America is now joining this list. Take a look at the map on your screens now. The states marked in red are the ones that will definitely restrict abortion. Now that Roe v. Wade has fallen, there are at least 22 states where abortion is set to become illegal. Most of these are Republican-controlled states. Texas and Missouri have already banned abortion. Texas has even declared June 24th as a holiday. There are 13 states that have so-called trigger laws in place, which will eventually lead to an immediate ban. And these are Arkansas, Idaho, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, North Dakota, South Dakota, Tennessee, Utah, Texas, Oklahoma, and Wyoming. These states are mostly in the south and the west of the United States. The ones in orange were the ones where it will be accessible but not protected. The yellow states are the ones where abortion will continue to be legal. In the states marked in blue, abortion will, only, will not only be legal, they will moreover provide expanded access to those seeking abortion across the country. Democratic governors are already pushing to enshrine abortion rights within their constitutions. The West Coast states of California, Oregon, Washington have issued a joint pledge to defend abortion rights. And until now, abortion was legal in every U.S. state. Each state had at least one clinic. But now that Roe v. Wade has fallen, it will create more and more new legal landmines, rapidly eroding the individual rights of American citizens. Red states will try to limit interstate travel for women traveling for abortions. Packages with abortion pills could be searched and seized, and doctors could be arrested for criminal charges. Now, if this ruling on abortion is any indication, the conservative majority may continue making major shifts to U.S. law in the seven cases it has yet to issue opinions on. And for more analysis and inputs, joining us live from New York is our correspondent Susan Tehrani. Susan, the U.S. Supreme Court has struck down abortion rights for women. At least half of American states are expected to ban abortion. You're in New York. We've seen pro-abortion protesters take to the streets in the state. How are people responding as of now? Mo well, you know, New York is a blue state, and just even after that uh, draft opinion was leaked, uh, Governor Kathy Hogel had a press conference and said that, you know, people that want to have abortion and are uh, pro-abortion and pro-choice are welcome in the state. So New York is really not going to be affected. But I do want to really 
emphasize the fact that it's not that abortion is going to be banned across the United States. Abortion is not going to be restricted across the United States. What is going to happen is what was happening before Roe v. Wade, before 50 years ago, which is the decision regarding abortion and its nuances is going to go back to the states and state legislators. And people, individuals in those states can vote on how they want their uh, abortion laws to be. So uh, if we stay, take a step back, while change is very difficult for a lot of people like New York, which is very pro-choice, you know, this would mean expanded abortion rights. That means abortion activists right. now have more rights to go and expand abortion. In red states, if you do have much activism that are pro-life, uh, pro then, you know, they have the opportunity to do that. And in the next election, you know, uh, elect uh, officials that would vote, you know, pro-life. But most Americans fall somewhere in the middle. So while, you know, you have those snapback uh, rules uh, and regulations right now for the next coming elections, you know, those rules and regulations uh, might change. Here in New York, not much is expected to change, but, you know, it is very blue. It is very progressive. Absolutely. Susan, thank you so much for all those inputs. Stay with us on this broadcast. We'll, of course, come back to you for more inputs on this story. For now, let's tell you this about the statement made by the U.S. President. U.S. President Joe Biden said that the new Supreme Court ruling took America back 150 years. He called on the U.S. Congress to enshrine Roe versus Wade as federal law. Listen in. It's a sad day for the court and for the country. Fifty years ago, Roe v. Wade was decided and has been the law of the land since then. This landmark case protected woman's right to choose, her right to make intensely personal decisions with her doctor, free from, inter from the interference of politics. It reaffirmed basic principles of equality, that women have the power to control their own destiny, and it reinforced a fundamental right of privacy, a right of each of us to choose how to live our lives. Now, with Roe gone, let's be very clear. The health and life of women in this nation are now at risk. The only way we can secure a woman's right to choose in the balance that existed is for Congress to restore the protections of Roe v. Wade as federal law. They made the United States an outlier among developed nations in the world. But this decision must not be the final word. My administration will use all of its appropriate lawful powers. But Congress must act. And with your vote, you can act. You can have the final word. This is not over. Now, we still have our correspondent, Susan Tehrani, from New York. Susan, thanks so much for staying on. Now, we just heard some of the statements that President Biden made. He made his stance quite clear. He said that this verdict has pushed America back 150 years, jeopardized the health of women, which, of course, is a crucial factor in all of this, the women and their health. But will this statement assuage the expected anger on the streets in the coming two days? Yeah, there are some very radical uh, pro-choice groups. Uh, and there is one group that uh, is called Ruth sent us. There is another group that uh, the FBI is monitoring very closely. They sent out a tweet that just said rage, a uh, night of rage uh, when Roe v. Wade comes out. So, um, you know, uh, it's and he and President Biden elsewhere in his speech also called for peaceful protest because he knows that, you know, things could get out of hand. Uh, you know, on the one hand, the streets uh, and the violence that might really happen against not only the Supreme Court justices, but also against, um, you know, pro-life clinics, churches, places of worship. Um, those are a cause for concern. But on the other hand, you know, uh, there is also a cause for concern um, among, uh, 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 you know, politicians and, you know, uh, pro-life uh, individuals that these two might clash with one another as well. So, um, 
you know, we'll see, you know, what happens tonight and in the coming days. But I think there was a reason, a twofold reason, that the justices decided uh, on a Friday to release this uh, decision. First of all, perhaps that it'll be in a weekend. Um, they might be able to get out of town themselves. And second of all, it might be a time for Americans to be able to take a step back and reflect on this issue. Well, again, as I mentioned, change is very uh, difficult, but perhaps it might provide some kind of leeway that both sides have an opportunity now that the decision is in the hands of the people and legislators, they may be able to take steps to expand and uh, move forward in a democratic way and not hide behind the Supreme Court when it comes to decisions uh, regarding abortion. Right, Susan, thanks so much for uh, tracking all the updates from New York and thanks for joining us on Beyond World is One at this hour. Let's get you some global reactions now. Leaders in America and from across the world have condemned the ruling by the U.S. Supreme Court. Let's listen in. Today, the Republican-controlled Supreme Court has achieved their dark, extreme goal of ripping away a woman's right to make their own reproductive health decisions. Because of Donald Trump, Mitch McConnell, and the Republican Party, their supermajority in the Supreme Court, American women today have less freedom than their mothers. With Roe and their attempt to destroy it, radical Republicans are charging ahead with their crusade to criminalize health freedom. In the Congress, be aware of this, the Republicans are plotting a nationwide abortion ban. One day ago, tell states, state leaders like myself, that I don't have complete control to determine who should be able to carry a gun in a place like this. But that same Supreme Court has no problem stripping away a woman's right to control her body and allowing states to regulate her decisions. Meaning, as a result, in states that don't allow abortions any longer, and that's what the Supreme Court gave them license to do, you'll end up with government-mandated pregnancies. How do you reconcile that with taking away the ability that they just did with the gun case yesterday for states to protect our citizens? Look, I, I, I'd be absolutely uh, clear with everybody, uh, this is not our uh, court, it's another, it's another jurisdiction, but clearly it has massive impacts uh, on people's uh, thinking ar around the world. It's a very important decision. I've got to tell you, I think it's a big step backwards. I think it's a big step backwards. I've, I've always believed in uh, a woman's right to choose, and uh, I stick to that view, and that's why the, uh, the UK has the, the laws that it does. And actually, if you look, we, we recently took steps to make sure that uh, th those laws were, uh, were enforced throughout the whole of the, of the UK. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.